Well, it always helps, I think, if there's been finds of stuff there before. I mean, most old villages, there is a medieval core to it somewhere, and it's a matter of finding it. It's a bit like a game of battleships. You know what I mean? You keep square, square here, square here, square here, and then eventually, boom, you hit the battleship. And then once you've hit the battleship, you spread out from there. So it's knowing where to start. I mean, when you're doing things like test pitting villages, not finding stuff in its own way is as important as finding stuff. You want to know where people were but you also want to know where they weren't. Okay, so if we start from the beginning then, if I'm in a village and I want to find out if anything's ever been found in that village before, where do I go to find that information? Um, starting point for that's the historic environment record, which each county should have. It's a sort of database of all the known archeological finds uh, in the area. A lot of them are online now as well, because funny enough, I was doing a job last week and I was just using it myself. I got this scatter of pottery and it turned out there was a, a moated site 100 yards away and a DMV just over the side of it. So it'll give you the basic information like that. So, so you have to put into that your coordinates or the name of your just village? Just the name or? of your village uh, and your okay. county and that okay. should should okay. tell you what's known. Okay so you have a little check and see if anything's been found before. Other steps that you can do before you think oh you've got it's worthwhile doing? What else do you look at in the place? Well I mean obvious things like were the churches. Um, I mean it doesn't, churches are usually good indicators of medieval activity but then again not always. Um, I've worked down in Essex a fair bit and the churches in Essex appear to have nothing around them. The 400 metres from the settlement. Places like Suffolk, the, uh, the church is smack in the heart of the village and there's even Saxon around it so Things like that's always a good start. And if you've got somewhere called the Old Manor, for instance, in the village, then there's a fair chance it's the Old Manor House. So that gives you your initial sort of targets to, to spread out from, I suppose. Okay. The thing is with most villages, um, again, it depends where you are, but a lot of them have expanded from the medieval core. They've had developments in Victorian times, and then maybe again in the 70s. So the fields uh, around the village have probably always been fields. You're not right. always likely to pick very much up out there. Um, Victorian back gardens can be surprisingly useful, even modern developments. I was, I was doing some test pitting down in Essex on Mersey Island a few years ago and there was a development of 1970 houses. We dropped a test pit in and we hit a completely undisturbed Bronze Age horizon 25 centimetres down. We've had Neolithic pottery out from 30 centimetres below a school playing field, you know. Uh, I was getting flint tools out of the back garden of a Victorian house only last week. So, so, just, just, so just because the gardens you've chosen apparently are of modern houses doesn't necessarily mean that a test pit or something in them might not come down and something Absolutely, you know, we've had test pits that produce three, four thousand years worth of evidence of right. occupation. It's and it's is there one village that sticks in your mind? We've been trying to come up with the kind of idyllic village that's got Roman, Saxon, church, manor. Is there one particular village that you recall as having rather a lot of the right stuff there's, as it were? There's dozens of them. Right. They're everywhere. Right. I mean, most of my work's been in East Anglia, okay. admittedly. Yeah. Uh, but there Can are... Can you remember one? With a um, decent pub or, you know? Uh -huh. My favourite is probably one I've only been dealing with recently, a place called Gaywood, just outside Kings Lynn. Right. It's fairly, it's a suburb, um, right. 1950s, semis, yeah. modernish school. Um, but there's a river running along the back of the, the semis, uh, the semi detached houses. Yeah. We've started test pitting it and it's, there's a middle Saxon waterfront there and yeah. it's completely intact, it's under the gardens. We're getting 30, 40 centimetres of undisturbed Saxon archaeology. Yeah. Big chunks of middle Saxon pottery. And how do your fellow archaeologists regard, how do the majority of archaeologists regard this somewhat enthusiastic engagement with amateurs? Because I know in the past, some elements of archaeology archaeologists have been a bit snippy about you know engaging the public how have you found the process to be it's incredibly useful when you test pitting you don't need a vast amount of archaeological expertise all you need to be able to do is recognize finds and measure 10 centimeters and write that's all the skills you need and the information it, 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 that's coming out is fantastic i mean i've been involved with this project uh, with the university of cambridge for about seven years now and we're rewriting the book on medieval settlement development. A lot of the stuff that was thought to be set in stones being thrown out the window. And this is simply by kids and members of the public digging test pits in their back garden and us getting to see the finds and record them all. It's, it's a fabulous way of doing big scale archaeology cheaply and quickly.